Well, good morning, everyone, and I want to start by wishing everyone here and around Ontario a happy International Women's Day. International Women's Day is about celebrating the incredible contributions that women have made to our province. And I'm so grateful for the amazing women in my life, my wife Carla and my four daughters, and I'm so proud of all of them. And it's such an honour to work alongside so many remarkable female colleagues at Queen's Park. They're great leaders and great role models for women right across Ontario. So once again, I want to wish them and everyone here a happy International Women's Day. Friends, I'm thrilled to be back in the beautiful town of Milton alongside Minister Calandra and the longest serving mayor in Canadian history, Mayor Krantz, always great to see you. And uh, Mayor, I just, I just want to thank you and the entire City Council and staff for hosting us today. What a beautiful City Hall, by the way, too. You've all been great partners to our government as we work together to build the homes and the critical infrastructure that Milton needs. Milton is one of the fastest growing communities in the entire province. In fact, it's expected that the town's population is going to triple over the next 30 years. Just think, Mayor when you're a little guy growing up here compared to what, what you have now. Boy, we've swapped some great stories. That's why we need to build. Unlike previous governments that failed the plan for growth, we're embarked on the most ambitious capital plan in Ontario's history. In healthcare, we've added 3,500 new hospital beds since 2020, including in Halton Region, and we're investing $50 billion over the next decade to support more than 50 new hospital projects across the province. In education, we're building two new elementary schools here in Milton, accommodating close to 1,700 students. And we're getting shovels in the ground for transit projects, roads and highways. We've expanded Highway 401 with 18 kilometers of new lanes between Mississauga and Milton. We're moving ahead with Highway 413, from planning and land acquisition to engineering environmental assessments. This highway will reduce travel times by 30 minutes each way, saving drivers up to more than an hour per day on one of the most congested corridors in North America. Now I know another long-standing priority for this region is bringing all-day two-way GO service to the Melton GO line. Our government has made progress We've added new trains, improved stations, and increased the number of trips. But the people of Milton need more. They deserve more. That's why we've called on the federal government to join us in a cost-sharing partnership to build a fully separated passenger, passenger rail line so we can finally make two-way, all-day go a reality. We're ready to go. We need the feds to get on board as we move forward these massive infrastructure projects we're working closely with Mayor Krantz and Council to build more homes. Last summer, we introduced Building Faster Fund. This new fund is a three-year, $1.2 billion program that will reward municipalities for making significant progress against housing targets. And today, I'm pleased to announce that Milton not only met the 2023 target, but exceeded it by 27%. So, Mayor and Council, thank you. Last year, Milton broke ground on 1,952 new homes. It's just amazing. Just think of that. 1,952 uh, families are, are going to have an opportunity to call Milton home. So today, it's my privilege to prevent the Town of Milton with a Building Faster Fund for $8.4 million. These funds can be used by the town for infrastructure projects that lay the groundwork for more housing and community development. This check is a testament to the hard work of Mayor Krantz and Council and staff. We need other municipalities to follow their lead. So once again, congratulations. We look forward to continuing working with you to build more homes and to build the infrastructure Milton needs to move people and the economy forward. Thank you all for joining us, and may God bless the people of Ontario. Now, I'll hand it over again to the longest-serving mayor in the entire country. Mayor, over to you. Thank you. Well, uh, Premier, uh, thank you very much. And again, I had mentioned earlier on uh, that I'm from uh, the old school. 
but I know the uh, the prompter there had uh, my remarks there as well, but I'm going to read them exactly uh, as uh, I see it. Uh, good morning. I'm pleased to be here today on behalf of Milton Council and, of course, welcoming Premier Ford again to Milton. Welcome also to the Honourable Minister Calandra. Premier, we are grateful that you have made time to in your schedule to visit our town and especially when you arrive with funding for our community. We, we are even happier to see you. Minister Calandra, I thank you for your continued work and collaboration with municipalities and of course the, the mayors we made yourself accessible and we appreciate that. Thank you for the 8.4 million from the Building Faster Fund as part of Ontario government's commitment to support housing infrastructure and community growth. As you noted, the town exceeded our annual target in 2023. This is due largely to council's strategic growth plan that pre-approves the right land use in the right places in our core urban growth areas and the dedication of our staff who every day work to streamline processes and approvals to enable the collective efforts of the town and the development community in advancing housing in Melton. Melton is one of Ontario's most rapidly expanding areas and we remain dedicated to cultivating a diverse housing landscape. I know I've mentioned this a few times in the past year, but I'm proud of our team and their performance. Melton was recognized by BUILD as the fastest municipality to approve development applications and building uh, commitment in our municipal role. Provincial Homes Faster is shared priority at a local, provincial, and federal level. Thank you, Premier and Minister Kalander, for your ongoing support of municipalities through legislation and funding. Again, thank you uh, for today's funding for our Melton community. And again, Premier, as you had mentioned uh, there before, uh, council is very important. I have some of my elected colleagues uh, here with me now. Uh, and I said many, many times, of course, to some degree, tongue in cheek, I take all the credit for things when they go well. The team that I work with can take the blame when it doesn't. It's a great partnership, Premier. Thanks for that partnership with the town of Melton and the region of home. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll now go to reporters' questions. If you could please line up with the microphone behind me. Please identify yourselves by name and outlet. It'll be one question and one follow-up. Good morning, Premier. Good Snow morning. Thank you. Snehi Dougal with the Trillium. Uh, Jamil Giovanni won Durham for the Federal Conservatives earlier this week. He was an advisor to your government a few years ago. Um, in his victory speech, he said, liberal elites are betraying the working people of this country, including the liberal elites who run the Ontario Minis Ministry of Education in this province, implying Minister Lecce. Uh, what's your response to this? And are you worried about Federal Conservatives railing against your ministers like this? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about uh, Jamil. I gave that young man an opportunity. He showed up. No one even knew who he was. Came in my office. I gave him an incredible opportunity. Uh, to be very frank, you go to root cause, he wouldn't even be where he is if I didn't give him that opportunity. So I just want to wish uh, Jamil all, all the best. He should focus on maybe the carbon tax. Maybe he should come in. I'll give him a couple lessons on how to speak to uh, you know his constituents and that. But uh, he should really focus money, putting money back into their pockets, and, uh, you know, focus on the carbon tax. Uh, we're, we're doing great for the people of Ontario. We're going to do great for his riding that he's going to represent. I want to wish him all the best, and uh, hopefully he wins that riding. Um, just switching gears a bit uh, to the autism program. Yes. Uh, the minister's transition binder last year, it indicated that under the current budget for the program, the government would be able to support 20,000 kids in core services. Yeah. Um, according to an FOI we filed, the government had nearly reached that number as of the end of December with about around 17,000 yeah. um, kids enrolled. What happens once you reach the 20,000 kids? Is the government considering increasing the budget for the autism program um, so that more kids can get into core services? 
Yeah, Minister Parsons has done an absolutely incredible job. It's up to 20,000 uh, now, and, and we've increased funding since I took office. I'll never forget the first few weeks that that file had zero money in it at all. Uh, we've increased that, uh, that fund uh, probably two and a half times. We're going to continue supporting uh, families that have children with autism. And uh, I talk to families almost every single day and uh, we're doing everything we can to support them. We're going to continue doing that. I want to thank uh, Minister Parsa for the great work because every call I get, I speak to the people, then I forward it over to Minister Parsa, and uh, he has a good conversation uh, with, with those families. Hey, good morning, Premier. Colin DeMello with Global News. Um, talking about the Building Faster Fund in Milton specifically, you said that Milton exceeded its targets, but about 190 of these new homes were actually long-term care beds. Not homes, but beds. Uh, there are people who agree with your decision to count yeah. uh, long-term care beds as a home, and there are some people so, who disagree. Yeah. I just want to know from you, how, how can you consider a bed to be a home? Well, for, first of all, Colin, th thanks for that question, but uh, when a senior is living in a, in a condo and moves out to a long-term care, it's called a home. Uh, I challenge anyone to go in and talk to these seniors and tell them they have a bed and not a home. They have their own room, they eat in a dining room with everyone else, and uh, the house or, or the apartment they moved out of just frees it up for uh, some younger folks to, to buy it. So these are homes, uh, again, I challenge anyone to go in and talk to these seniors and say, hey, you got a bed. We're building homes. Uh, we're, we're compared to the previous government, let's put it in this pr perspective. Uh, they built like 608 beds in 15 years. Uh, we're building 30,000 homes and uh, renovating another 28,000. Uh, and again, uh, these are homes. They, these are their own rooms. They aren't stacked up four to a room like the previous government had, and uh, I'm just so proud of the, the great job Minister Cho is doing on long-term care. Um, thank you. On auto theft, uh, we yes. took a look at the numbers from uh, Peel Region, and in the first three months, oh, sorry, the first two months of the year, there were 1,433 cars that were stolen, sure. despite the $18 million that your government had given Peel Region in November of 2023. Uh, so the money that you gave them it's, it doesn't seem to be working. Are you disappointed that the car thefts in Peel Region have not decreased in the first couple of months? Well, Chief Nish has done an incredible job. All Peel Region uh, police are out there uh, going after the, the criminals, but there's a, a kind of a, a, a few-prong approach here. Number one, the Montreal port that uh, they're being shipped over to. We've asked the federal government to enhance the number of uh, border officers there, and hopefully they're going to do it, put more scanning machines there. Uh, part two is uh, these police officers uh, go into high-risk takedowns and they're putting their lives on the line only to see, and the, and the criminals, when they catch them, only to see that uh, the criminals mock them saying, I'll be out by the time you start your shift tomorrow uh, because they know uh, the judges are giving them bail. Uh, just imagine how they terrorize the neighborhoods going in, kicking in doors, putting guns to families' uh, heads, hand over your keys, smashing windows, stealing uh, goods. You know, I had a friend call me up the other day in Etobicoke and said, thank goodness my mother was away uh, because these criminals actually broke into her condo and stole everything they possibly could and just terrorizing these neighborhoods. I have a message uh, to all these criminals. We're coming for you. We're going to catch you, and you're going to jail. And no matter what it takes, every tool I have, including making sure we have judges that do not let these people out on bail. When I go out, I, I go out, be it the, the local store, the gas station, anywhere I go, every single person, every person is saying, keep going. Get judges that will keep these criminals in jail. Stop terrorizing our neighborhoods. Stop terrorizing our families. I'm coming for you, and when I get you, you're going to jail, and I can't wait. I'm going to put every resource we can to catch these criminals that are, are ruining our communities. Good morning, Premier. Uh, Liam Casey with the Canadian Press. Uh, speaking of jails, uh, over the last year, uh, the numbers of inmates inside have surged incredibly. They're well over capacity, uh, averaging 113% across the province. Just down the street, Maplehurst Jail, 134%. Guards are struggling. Times are tough right now. What is, if you're going to keep catching all these bad guys, yeah. 
Where are you going to put? Where are you going to put them all? Are you going to build great, more jails? Yeah, great question. I'm going to be building more jails, and I'm not worried about the criminals. I always uh, uh, support the the correctional officers there, uh, making sure that they have the resources to keep these criminals behind bars. Uh, but I'm going to I'll build as many jails as these as we need to put these criminals behind bars for a long time as as well. The the, the heinous crimes. Uh, they're, they're committing, and the stories I'm hearing is terrible. I've, I've seen videos of them trying to run our police officers over, going full steam at them, uh, numerous videos like this. I just want to give a big shout out to all our frontline women and men that are protecting our communities, and uh, I have your backs, and I'll put every resource I can, including building jails, uh, to keep these criminals uh, behind bars. So uh, I've talked to a few guards over the last week, and uh, they're really struggling. Yeah. Uh, PTSD rates are, are way up. Stress injury, mm -hmm. uh, moral stress injuries are way up. Yeah. Even suicides are up. They want more guards, more full-time guards. Mm -hmm. They say Minister Kersner's 1,000 uh, contract worker guards is nowhere near enough. So they need, they need yeah. more space so there's less inmates and more staff. Would you commit to hiring more guards to help out the frontline guys who are struggling? Yeah, I talk to the same correctional service officers, maybe the same ones you do, maybe not, but I always have their backs. I'm always going to support them. Uh, we'll sit down with the Solicitor General and follow through with the, the commitment of making sure that there's more cells to keep these criminals in and supporting our correctional services officers. Um, we're, we're building the first mental health and addiction facility in North America. Uh, to support correctional service officers, front, front, first responders, uh, frontline officers, firefighters, and paramedics, and, uh, and correctional service officers. Uh, so we're the first in North America to make a facility or put together a facility up in Calden. It's going to be spectacular. We're there to support them and their families, and I want to thank them for the great job that they're doing. Good morning, Premier. Good morning. Uh, David Lee. Uh, Milton Canadian champion. Uh, quick question, uh, what was the uh, Milton housing target for 2023 and what uh, number did they actually achieve? Well, I'm going to hand it over to the expert, Paul Klandra, but I know one thing, they exceeded their, their, their target and I'm so proud of the mayor and the council and the staff. Uh, they all play a critical role in, in making sure they hit their targets as one of the fastest growing regions in uh, all of Ontario. And again, it all starts with leadership. and. You know, the vast majority of the mayors, they're, they're all hitting their targets. The ones that aren't, uh, they have to look in the mirror and ask why. And uh, we're, we're there to support the communities. It's a Team Ontario uh, effort right now, but I'll pass it over to uh, Minister Kleinder. I'm embarrassed to tell you. I'll have to tell you at the at the end of the meeting, they built 1,900 homes, as you heard uh, from uh, from uh, the premier. So they really did smash it out of the out of the park. But at the at the end, I'll give you the exact uh, the exact number and the target. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Premier Laura Stone, Globe and Mail. Hey, Laura. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. After have a drink of water. Nice shirt tie combo. Yeah, that is. You know, I love that pink. Looks good. I do. Um, you seem less than impressed with Mr. Giovanni's comments about your government and particularly your education minister. Um, he, he's, he's essentially implying you're not really conservative. Why does, <laughs> why does there appear to be such growing tension uh, between your know. team and Pierre Polyev's team? Uh, I have no uh, tension between the federal conservatives. We're called the Progressive Conservative Party, PC Party of Ontario. Uh, we're working for the people of Ontario. I'll work with anyone. I'll work with the Liberals, NDP, the Conservatives, whoever gets in power, and I think I've shown that. And no matter if I'm dealing with uh, Olivia Chow, uh, which is supported by the NDP, we have a great relationship, and I'll have a great relationship with the Conservative uh, Party. So I, I have no problem working with absolutely anyone, as long as it's in the best interest of Ontario. When it's not in the best interest of Ontario, you're going to hear me loud and clear. Thank you. And um, on the government's recently announced pharmacare plan, um, your government seems very lukewarm to the idea. And the health minister almost seems annoyed or frustrated of, of having to deal with it. Yeah. Why is, does Ontario seem like it's not really on board with the plan? Well, there's very little details. I think you've seen it, Laura. That's next to nothing. Uh, let's, let's review the actual details. when. When they give them to all the provinces, I, I know Quebec and Alberta just immediately said, 
said no, but I'm always open to uh, reviewing it. And if it's going to help the people of Ontario, I'm all in. But it has to help the people of Ontario. That's the number one priority. But the feds have to give us more details. It was, it was like we're doing this and we'll get to the details later. And that's fine. That's fine. But let's see the details. Hi, Premier. Siobhan Morris from CTV News. Hi, Siobhan. Uh, I'm wondering if Ontario would entertain doing something similar to what Saskatchewan is doing, not collecting uh, or passing on the carbon tax collected on home heating. Well, we, we can't do that. They, uh, they own the utility, so they can, they can do it. We can't because our, our utility uh, suppliers are, are uh, private. We do have uh, shares and obviously Hydro One, but Enbridge and other utility companies are private. So we, we can't do it, but good luck to my friend Scott Moe. You know, the carbon tax is the worst tax you could ever put on the backs of people. And I can't believe the federal government is actually going to hike the gas tax by 23%. Like, what don't you get? I've told them over and over again, the number one issue with people is affordability, affordable homes, affordable groceries, and affordable gas. And what drives up uh, the, the inflation is energy cost. When you're gouging people at the pumps, they're, they're already taking, what, 17 and a half cents compared to, we're, we reduced it by 10.7 cents. Guys, wake up, smell the coffee. Like, what don't you understand? Cancel this carbon tax, put it on hold, do whatever, and if you don't, the people of Canada are going to annihilate you when the election comes up. Simple as that. Uh, on the Pharmacare deal, what other details are you still waiting for for you to be able to be satisfied one way or the other to say yes or no? Well, we need a full detailed plan, and we don't have a full detailed plan. I know the, the Minister, uh, uh, Sylvia Jones, Deputy Premier, is working closely with the federal government's Minister of Health. We want a detailed plan, not a hokey-pokey one. So let's, let's get a detailed plan. We'll sit down, and uh, we're always open to having great ideas, as long as they're great, to support the people of Ontario. This will be the last reporter. Hi, uh, Keith from CBC. We're hearing from family doctors that inflation is eating into their income, and they say this is one of the reasons behind the shortage of family doctors in Ontario. Your government is negotiating with the Ontario Medical Association right now. Are you willing, or how willing are you to pay the family doctors better? Well, what we're doing to support the family doctors, and by the way, I want to thank them all. They do an incredible, incredible job. We have a really good relationship with the Ontario Medical Association. Um, what we're doing is we're adding more doctors, take the burden off them. Uh, we're, we've added over 10,400 doctors since we've been, we've been in office. We've added over 80,000 new nurses uh, right here in Ontario. We're, we're looking at uh, making sure that we get rid of all the paperwork. The number one issue with the docs is all the paperwork that they have to fill out. That's what's taking up time. Uh, we're working on that in collaboration with the OMA, coming up with ideas how we can reduce the paperwork until they have more time to spend with their patients. But I want to thank all the doctors out there. You're all absolute champions, and uh, we'll be able to come up with a, a great deal. Compared to the previous government, the Liberals, they wouldn't even talk to the OMA. That's the difference. We have a very good and healthy relationship, open dialogue, open conversations. Uh, the president and previous president and previous president beside, behind that all have my cell number and I'm open to calls and talking with them anytime. But again, thank you to all our great doctors. And by the way, we're going to get more doctors because we're adding more seats. Unlike the previous government that got rid of seats in, in universities, medical schools, and didn't build any, we're building new medical universities. One, one out in Brampton, which is going to be great. Another one in Scarborough and up north, we're adding more grads and undergrads until we can have more doctors uh, uh, become uh, family physicians right here in Ontario. Thanks, everyone. I was enjoying that. Joyce. <laughs> anyways, yeah, okay. Well, anyways, thank you, everyone. <laughs> Laura, you're pushing the envelope, but I, I think the world of you, by the way. Thank you, everyone. Thanks again to the Mayor Milton and the Council. Folks, we are so fortunate. 
You know, let me just run through a couple of things for you here. You think of Ontario, I spent a lot of time in the U.S. We've become an economic powerhouse around the world. We've seen $28 billion in the EV sector. We've seen $3 billion in life sciences. We've seen tens of billions of dollars in, in tech. Uh, the mining uh, convention, I don't know if you went over there. There's 300 countries that have come here to look at, go after our critical minerals and actually go after them, but build facilities here. Uh, you just think that we, we have everything going for us. We build helicopters here. We build planes, trains, automobiles. We have one of the largest ag sectors in the, in the world. We ship out 19.6 billion of agricultural products out of our great farms into the U.S. and everywhere in the world. We produce $57 billion of food and beverage. We manufacture everything. We're known now as the best place around the world to invest when it comes to uh, EV, batteries, and auto assembly. And the great news is, there's 700,000 more people working today than there was the previous year. We just saw the job numbers. They're up 6,700. There's 6,700 more people that had a job last month than the previous month, which was up the previous month. Folks, I talked to a lot of people. We are blessed to live in the greatest region in the entire world, and that's called Ontario. We're building uh, highways and, and hospitals and, and schools. I'm just so grateful to be the premier of the greatest region in the entire world. Thank you and God bless. Thank you.